78 track slip back into those hot pants because the 1970s are back if you remember you'll never forget days like these friday 8 30 itv well i'm better in my place because they can't catch me i actually get my license back august year 2000. britain's worst drivers friday at nine on itv Brilliant. He said he would try these honey nut shredded treats. Just in case I didn't like them. I thought they would be delicious, but Dad told me they were horrible. Light, crunchy shredded wheat bites, golden honey and toasted nuts make honey nut shredded wheat so moorish. Look, he's carried on tasting them just to make sure. Careful, son. Don't touch that. That's Dad. Honey nut shredded wheat. The taste to lie for. Makeup is just a cover-up? That's so yesterday. But makeup that improves my skin? That's today. That's New Visible Lift by L'Oreal. The magic is Pro-Retinol A in a makeup. So it doesn't just cover those little laugh lines. It also helps reduce their appearance. New Visible Lift by L'Oreal. So now when I put on my makeup, I look much younger. Now that's a visible lift. I can see it, I can feel it, and I'm worth it. Sorting out money matters on your own can be a worry. Are you putting enough aside for your retirement? How will you manage if your kids make it to university? Talking one-to-one -one with Britannic helps. We offer straightforward, no-nonsense advice that suits your pocket. So if you'd like a little help, give us a call. Britannic Assurance. Partnership for life. Sooner or later, you realise that you need to look after yourself. What you eat or drink makes a difference. So when I heard there was something as nutritious as milk, but with more calcium, I switched to So Good. It has more calcium and even more vitamins A and D, but no animal fat and absolutely no cholesterol. Now I use So Good wherever I used milk. There's only one drawback. I wish they delivered it. Be good to yourself with So Good. Tonight on Thursday Night Live, the dad who left his daughter with child killer Myra Hindley is Hindley the demon she was. Is a teacher ever right to seduce a pupil in his or her care? And is stress just an alibi for wimps? A not entirely stress-free edition of Thursday Night Live after News at 10. You're watching Central, part of the ITV network. And now it's time for the main evening news. News at 10 with Trevor McDonald. More trouble for the FA, arrests tonight in gambling scam. Anglo-Spanish row over Gibraltar deepens. The truly awful state of Britain's railways. Vanessa's horror over fake guest allegations. And the sky at midday, what we'll see six months from now. Good evening. A suspected betting scam involving the sabotage of floodlights at Premiership football grounds is being investigated by police and the football authorities tonight. Four men, one Briton and three foreign nationals, were arrested last night over damage to electrical equipment at Charlton Athletics ground The Valley in south-east London. Scotland Yard are now looking into instances where the lights have mysteriously gone out at other grounds, including Derby Counties, West Ham's and Wimbledon's. ITN's Paul Davis reports. An inquiry with implications far beyond South East London began at Charlton Athletic's Valley Ground last night. Four men were arrested after evidence was uncovered of what appeared to be an attempt to sabotage the floodlights. It became clear the football authorities were treating this as much more than a case of suspected burglary or vandalism when representatives of the Football Association, the Premier League and Football League issued a joint statement this evening. Those in custody are neither players nor officials of Charlton Athletic. We understand one of them is employed by an outside company which is used by the club. The three others are believed to be foreign nationals. 
Football, it appears, may have been the intended victim of an outside attack. That attack has been thwarted, for which we're all very grateful. Police investigating the possible role of a foreign gambling syndicate are now studying past premiership matches abandoned because of floodlight failure. This match between West Ham and Crystal Palace last season is one. The Wimbledon Arsenal game was another. Arsenal attacking left to right in the second half now. And the lights have gone out! Officials at Charlton believe there may have been an attempt to stop this weekend's game against Liverpool to benefit a foreign gambler. As a result of last night's events, we are carrying out a full investigation of all of our lighting and electrical circuits. When this is complete, a further statement about Saturday's league game versus Liverpool will be issued. Bruce Grobler and other players were eventually cleared on charges of match rigging, but football has been concerned about the activities of Far Eastern gambling syndicates for many years. At this stage, with the police investigation still underway, the football authorities and Scotland Yard will only say they're looking into the possibility of deliberate sabotage and attempted match rigging. But David Davis, the FA's acting chief executive, appeared to underline the fear that foreign syndicates may be tampering with Britain's national sport, and he said tonight, football is under attack. Paul Davis, News at 10, at FA headquarters in Lancaster Gate. The Foreign Office Minister promised today that Britain would stand by Gibraltar in its escalating row with Spain. It began with a fishing dispute, but Spain is now threatening to stop aircraft to and from the rock overflying its territory and to stop drivers with Gibraltar license plates crossing into Spain. The government's protested to the European Commission. Our political editor Michael Brunson reports. Gibraltar, British since 1713, Spanish until then, stands sentinel at the Atlantic Gateway to the Mediterranean. That's why it's so important. Spain wants the rock back still. Retrocession in the jargon. Two weeks ago, a dispute about Spanish boats fishing in Gibraltar Harbour was settled, but Madrid now says the Gibraltar government had absolutely no right to settle that dispute. The fishermen have agreed. They are quite happy. It is a Spanish foreign minister who, I might add, is one of the last remaining Francoists left in the Spanish government, uh, who wishes to try and be the Spaniard who gets the retrocession of Gibraltar back into Spain. So Madrid is now talking of sanctions, threatening to disrupt traffic, for example, at the border crossing into Spain by refusing to accept licenses issued in Gibraltar. It's an old tactic. Thirty years ago, General Franco shut the border completely. It stayed shut for 16 years, but I was there to see it reopen. This was how I described that moment in 1985. The key just wouldn't turn at first. In truth, total confusion almost overwhelmed the first arrivals from the leading motorcycle to the elegant Rolls-Royce. But 14 years on, any threat of trouble on that border still has MPs calling for the equivalent of a gunboat to be dispatched. And now's the time not come for that fishery protection vessel to go down to Gibraltar and let's take the kick gloves off and let's ensure that we get a right deal for our people in the United Kingdom and Gibraltar. No gunboats at the moment, but a steely warning later from the minister concerned that we won't back down. We can't uh, negotiate away the Gibraltarians' rights to be able to um, decide whether or not they want to be part of Spain or, or remain as they are. Uh, that is their right under the constitution. Their views are paramount. And while the Foreign Secretary, Robin Cook, has said that he will talk to the Spanish about all this, he too has also today reassured the Gibraltarians of Britain's backing. Michael Brunson, News at 10, Westminster. Some Republican votes were swinging President Bill Clinton's way today as the American Senate, the jury in his impeachment trial, prepares to wrap up the case. The verdict's expected tomorrow, but there's now no doubt that Mr. Clinton's safe, as our Washington correspondent James Mates reports. The Senate will convene as a court of impeachment. Tomorrow